Hey guys, my name is Anne Catherine. I am a second year grad student here in the physics department at UCI. Um, and today I have a video for you all going through one of the practice problems from week eight. So if you look on Canvas, that practice problem is labeled previous quiz eight solutions.pdf. Um, so you can find it there, but the solution is pretty short. So I'm going to go through it in a lot of detail. This problem is pretty tricky. It involves integrals, indefinite and definite. Um, vectors and some other things. So let's get into it. All right, so here's our problem. A bird initially sits in a tree five meters above the ground. It then begins to fly with a time dependent acceleration of ax equals 10 and ay equals 3t meters per second squared. What is the displacement of the bird after two seconds? How high vertically from the ground is the bird after two seconds? All right, so when I tackle physics problems, I like to do the same three steps to start every single time. So the first one is to write down all of the given information. So if we take a look at this problem, it's pretty short, but there's actually a good amount we can get out of it. We know that our y0, our initial height is five meters. Um, and then we're going to choose our initial x value to be zero meters. The problem doesn't tell us what x should be. And in general, if you're not told, um, Choosing zero for, for your x and y component is going to simplify some math later on. Um, and then we're also given our acceleration vector. Um, so we're given that acceleration vector in x and y components. Um, so the x component of the acceleration vector is 10, and the y component is 3t. And then finally, we know that our final time is 2 seconds. Um, so again, I am choosing a t0 of 0 seconds. If I wanted to make things a little more difficult on myself, I could choose like t0 equals 2 seconds and t final equals 4 seconds because the only time information that we're given is 2 seconds pass. But it's going to be a lot easier to choose t initial equals 0 seconds and t final equals 2 seconds. All right, so the second thing I always do when doing physics problems is to draw a picture. Um, so in this case, we have an x, y axis, like we're very used to seeing at this point. Um, and we know that our initial position of the bird is going to be 0, 5. Um, x equals 0, y equals 5. As you can see, I am attempting a little bird drawing here. Um, there you go. I tried for you. And 0, 5, like I said, is its initial position. And that's all we're given for right now. So there's nothing else um, that we need to draw on to our coordinate system as of right now, but we will a little bit later. So hold on to that coordinate system. All right, and then number three is to write down any possibly relevant equations. Um, so when you're doing this step in general, it's good to just sort of brainstorm every equation that you could possibly use because it can be a really nice reference. Um, so in this case, you might think that we would want to use the kinematic equations just based on the way that the problem is given. Um, and this is one of the trickiest parts of the problem is realizing that actually we can't use the kinematic equations because we don't have a constant acceleration. And the kinematic equations only work when your acceleration is constant, and that includes if you have no acceleration. So we are going to be using the integral formulas that we have been talking about in class this week. Um, so those come in definite and indefinite integral forms. So for our velocity, the indefinite integral form is v of t equals the integral of a of t dt. And then the definite integral form is very similar, except the left side of the equation is v of t final, which in this case is 2 seconds, minus v of t initial, which in this case is 0 seconds, equals the integral from t0 to t final of a of t dt. And then our displacement integrals look pretty much exactly the same, um, but with our displacement vector r. Um, so again, our indefinite integral is r of t equals the integral of v of t dt, and our definite integral equals r of t final minus r of t initial, where again, those are just our positions at our initial and final times, 
which in this case are 0 and 2 seconds, equals the integral from t0 to t final of v of t, our, our velocity vector, excuse me, dt. And then finally, we're working with vectors. So we are probably going to want to use SOHCAHTOA. And I'm just writing SOHCAHTOA as an abbreviation for our sine, cosine, and tangent formulas, which will come up at the very end of this problem. Um, so yeah, I wrote those relevant equations down at the very bottom there on the bottom left corner just to remind us. And I just simplified it and wrote down just the indefinite integral forms. All right, so how are we going to tackle this problem? So we're given acceleration, and what we want is velocity. Um, and we want to get velocity in x and y components. And I know that because we're given acceleration in x and y components. So we're going to do the whole problem just separating our x and y components the entire time. And then when we get to the end, we'll be able to calculate the magnitude and direction of our position vector, and that's going to be our displacement. So step one is going to be calculate v of t, aka the x and y components, using an indefinite integral. And then step two is going to be to calculate r of t, our displacement vector, again, in separating out the x and y components using a definite integral this time. Um, and this is a pretty tricky part of the problem, knowing when to use indefinite and definite integrals. Um, in this case, I want to use an indefinite integral in this first step because I want our velocity as a function of time so that I can then integrate again to get our displacement but I want our displacement vector to be a definite integral because we want the displacement after two seconds, so for a definite period of time. So again, this is tricky, um, and doing some more practice problems will hopefully help you try to, um, hopefully help you understand a little bit better uh, when to use definite and when to use indefinite. Okay. So first, we're going to start with our step one, of course, <laughs> and we're going to start by calculating the x component of our velocity. So we are going to use that equation I wrote below. We're doing the indefinite integral again. Um, so that integral is going to be v x of t equals the integral of a x of t dt. Um, so really important, notice I'm only going to be using my x component of the acceleration to calculate the x component of velocity, and then I'll do the y component next. So our x component of acceleration is just 10. So this is a really easy integral. Um, the integral of a constant times dt is just the constant times t. So we get 10t for the x component of our velocity. All right, that was pretty straightforward. Now we'll do the y component, which is a little bit of a trickier integral. So once again, hopefully you were expecting this, but the thing that's going to be inside the integral is the y component of our acceleration. Um, so there's no need to find the magnitude of the acceleration or anything like that. We just are completely separating our x and y components for the entire problem until the very end. Okay, so like I said, this integral is a little bit trickier. It's the integral of 3t dt. We can pull that 3 outside of the integral um, just to be able to see what's going on a little bit better. So now we have the integral of t dt. Um, which is a little easier to deal with, and that is going to be t squared divided by 2. Um, and you can check out some of the integral lecture notes if you don't quite see where that comes from, um, but it's just a pretty straightforward polynomial integral. So our y component of the velocity is 3 halves t squared. All right, and we are done with step one. Um, now, I just wanted to make a little aside here um, about indefinite integrals. So we are doing indefinite integrals, so you might be wondering why I'm not adding c, um, the constant, to the end of the integral. 
So this is because, and I'm about to write it out all out here, but hopefully it'll help a little bit to hear me explaining it at the same time. Um, For this velocity integral, so the integral of acceleration giving us velocity, the C that we're adding is our initial velocity. Um, And in this problem, we know that our initial velocity is zero for both the x and y components. Um, And we know that because the problem says a bird initially sits in a tree. So we can assume it's sitting, it has no velocity in the beginning, um, so that those initial components of the velocity are both equal to zero, as I'm writing here. So what that means is that we have no, we can just set C equal to zero, that constant that we're adding. Um, And this is a little bit of a tricky thing. I I picked this problem to do a video for because there's quite a few little tricky things. So um, this is just something to be aware of that in this case, the initial velocity is zero. So our C's can be zero. All right. So I'm just going to summarize what we found in step one. So that is V of T equals 10 T comma 3 halves T squared. And those again are X and Y components. All right, so now we're going to do something very similar for our displacement vector. Um, But in this case, we are going to be using a definite integral because we want the displacement um, for two seconds. But in terms of the steps, it's going to be really similar. So again, we're going to do the x component first. And I am just rewriting the definite integral form here so we can remember. That's just what I wrote before that got erased so I could have a little bit more space. All right, so moving on to our x component, um, those r's are going to be replaced by x's. That notation is a tiny bit tricky, um, but r is representing the vector in the xy plane. So r has x components and y components, whereas x is just the x component of the vector, as um, you might have guessed. All right, so we have x of t final minus x of t initial. And we know that our x of t initial is zero meters. Again, we chose this at the beginning of the problem to simplify our lives. And now we're going to see how it does simplify things. Um, So we're going to have x of t final, which is x of 2, minus 0, which is just equal to x of t final. All right, awesome. So now we can do our integral. So the bounds of our integral are 0 and 2, which again was a choice that we made. um, And that is the easiest choice to choose t0 equals 0. And we are looking at the x component of the velocity this time, which we calculated to be 10t. So we have the integral from 0 to 2, the x of t dt equals the integral from 0 to 2 of 10 t dt. Um, And this is a very similar integral to what we did in part one. We had 3 t dt, but it's going to be pretty much exactly the same math wise. So again, we're going to pull the 10 outside the integral. Integral from 0 to 2 t dt. And this is going to be equal to 10 times t squared over 2 but now we are evaluating this integral from 0 to 2. So we plug in the upper bound of the integral, which is 2, to the answer that we just got, and we subtract off 
the lower bound of the integral plugged in. I didn't, I don't know if I said that super clearly, but you're, you're about to see on screen what I mean if that wasn't clear. Um, so I plugged in the upper bound of the integral, which is two. So 10 times two squared over two minus 10 times zero squared over two. So that's our lower bound. So we have upper bound minus lower bound. And of course, zero squared is just zero. Um, so that whole term goes to zero because we have 10 times zero divided by two. All right. And then that first term, two squared is four. So we have 10 times four over two, which is just equal to 10 times two which is equal to 20. So that is our x component of our displacement vector. That is x of t final. All right, cool. So as you can see, that was a little bit more involved, but now we can move on and do the y component. And just rewriting x of t final which is the same thing as x of 2 because t final is 2 equals 20. All right. Now for the y component, um, hopefully you've kind of gotten used to what's going on here. Uh, it's going to be the same thing. We're doing our definite integral again. So we have y of t final minus y of t initial. And this is a tiny bit more complicated because our y of t initial is not 0. It's equal to 5. We can see our picture over there. The bird starts at a height of 5 meters. Um, so we won't be able to just leave off that term. So we have y of t final minus 5 And I accidentally wrote the, that little subscript F on the outside, but that was just a mistake. So don't worry about that. That's not trying to tell you anything special. There we go. Y of t final minus 5 equals the integral from 0 to 2 of the y component of the velocity. So again, super important. We are only looking at y components right now. And I'm just showing you where we got our bounds from. So you can see on that first line above, um, our y component is equal to 3 halves t squared. And this is the trickiest integral that, that we're going to do in the problem. Um, but it's not too terrible because it's just a polynomial again. So we can pull the 3 halves out of the integral. Integral from 0 to 2 of t squared dt. which hopefully you got figured out is equal to t cubed over three. Um, and again, if that's a little bit of a mystery for you, um, I would suggest going back and reviewing uh, the integral section of the lecture notes because integrals are tricky for sure. So yeah, no problem if you don't know where that comes from, but it is pretty important. So good to take a look. All right. So as you can see, I canceled my threes there. So I have um, the, ans the result of my integral is 1 half t cubed from 0 to 2. So again, I have to plug in my upper and lower bounds. So I have 2 cubed over 2 minus 0 cubed over 2, but 0 cubed over 2 is just 0, so that cancels out. So I get 2 cubed over 2, which is 8 divided by 2 which is 4. All right, so it would be very easy to say that 4 is our height, um, but we have to remember the left side of our equation. So the left side is y of t final minus 5. So this means that our y of t final is not equal to 4. It's going to be equal to 9, and I'm going to write this out right here just to show you guys that algebra. And you guys have heard a lot about the difference between um, displacement and height. Sometimes it's called different things. 
Um, in this case, our height is nine meters. Um, so that was one of the questions that the problem was asking. So we've solved part of the problem. Our height equals nine meters. Um, but this is different from the displacement vector. Um, so in just a sec, we're going to look at the displacement vector. And I'm just going to draw out on our coordinate system where this bird is flying to. So the x component is 20. The y component is 9. And I'm just going to draw the vector from 0, 5 to 29. And there we go. All right, so like I was just alluding to, our displacement vector um, is not actually going to be equal to 29, but it is equal to, and this is kind of a small little detail, but it's equal to x of t final minus x of t initial comma y of t final minus y of t initial. So you can see pretty clearly with the height, um, the bird flew up to a total height of nine meters, but the change in height is what we're interested in here. Um, oops, and looks like I forgot the minus sign on that y part of the vector. So that should say y of t final minus y of t initial, just like the x part. But yes, I got it when I wrote in the numbers. So 20 minus 0, comma, 9 minus 5. So our actual displacement vector is 20, comma, 4, not 20, comma, 9, because that is the displacement of the bird. All right. And we are almost finished. Now all I need to do is to calculate the magnitude and direction of that displacement vector, our 20, comma, 4 vector. So this is where our SOCOTO is going to come in, which hopefully you guys are experts on at this point. But it's tricky, so I'm going to go through it pretty slowly. All right, so as you can see on the left, I drew in our X and Y components. So we have our X component in red and our Y component in blue. Um, and first I'm going to calculate the direction. So I'm going to use tangent um, because we know the values of our X and Y components, but we don't know the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude. Um, so we have tangent theta equals four which is our displacement value. You can see pretty clearly, hopefully, on the plot that that blue arrow has a height of 4, um, aka 9 minus 5. And then our x component is 20, which hopefully you can also see pretty clearly on that plot. Again, that's the red line, the red horizontal line. All right, so... We have to invert tangent here on your calculator. It's either going to be called arctan or tan to the minus one. Um, and that's just tangent inverse. So theta equals tangent inverse of four over 20, which is equal to 11.31 degrees or 0 0.197 radians. And I'm rounded here, just so you guys know. Um, there's actually a bunch more decimal, decimal places in both the degrees and radians. All right, so now we have our direction, our theta value. So now we can calculate the magnitude. Um, and something that's kind of easy to forget is the magnitude of a vector is just the length of the hypotenuse. Um, so we can find this using sine. So we have sine of 11.31 equals opposite over hypotenuse, where our opposite is just our y component, um, that arrow in blue on the plot. And our y component is equal to 4. That's the displacement in the y direction. And our hypotenuse is what we're looking for. That's our magnitude. So with just a quick little bit of algebra, I'm multiplying h on both sides of the equation and dividing through by sine of 11.31 on both sides. We have h 
equals 4 divided by sine of 11.31. And again, I'm going to be rounding here. We have h, which is equal to the magnitude of the displacement vector, equals 20.396 meters. And as you can see, um, my drawing is not quite to scale, but it makes sense that the magnitude should be a little longer than the x component, um, and that angle is pretty small, so it's not going to be a whole lot longer. And our direction, again, is 11.31. And that is all. So again, tricky problem, but great job. Hopefully you followed along. Thanks, guys.